Today's head-on is shake, dice, or die. The subhead-on says the alternative given to a man who had to beat a six full. This article originally came from the San Francisco Examiner. It says, The Hotel Mateo was about to change management, and with the change has leaked out the story of a shooting scrape that occurred a few days ago in the clubhouse adjoining the hotel. John Wee Sr. owns the hotel as president of the Pacific Cannon Company and pays taxes on many broad, fat acres. Mr. Walt Myers, proprietor of a hotel in Wayside House at Belmont. Both men are known to many. One Saturday evening not long ago, Walt Meyer, who had taken an after-dinner drive up to San Mateo, dropped in at the hotel to exchange compliments with his acquaintances and indulge in the gossip of the place. Being on friendly terms with Mr. Lee, he soon fell into conversation with him. One warming glass was followed by others, and the two men became more and more loving and brotherly. When a game of poker was proposed, the two had one more drink and then took possession of the poker room at the end of the clubhouse. Everything went well until Lee lost $20 on one hand. Then the wrangling broke out and continued until the game broke up. Lee turned and went to the bar, but Waltmeyer went to the billiard room. When Lee found that Waltmeyer had not followed him, he called out, Say, I'll shake dice with you for $70. It's a go, answered Waltmeyer. I take you up. He then came up to the bar where Lee was leaning and waited to see if the capitalist would put up his portion of the stakes before planking down his own money. True to his word, Lee took $70 in gold out of his pocket and piled it up on the counter. There you are, he said. They're all shiners, every one of them. My owner is bright, I bet, said Walt Myers, who proudly displayed a handful of gold. Stack them up, can't you, man, as Lee. Stack them up and let's shake. Walt Meyer had some difficulty in counting out his $70. Several times he was obliged to go back and begin again. He seemed bent on underestimating the 20s and overvaluing the 10s. At last, in desperation, he slapped the gold down on the counter, and by holding on to each piece with both hands, calculating very hard and accepting Lee's assistance, he managed to make up his pile. He then pocketed the remaining money and called for one more drink. Now here you go, shouted Lee, whose voice had been given timbre and resonance by the stimulants. Now here you go. With that, he waved the dice box heroically, struck a melodramatic attitude as if addressing an audience, and called out, Now look! Six and aces, said the barkeeper. Too good pair. God hates a coward. Watch me fill, he rambled on. Again he lifted the box. Bang! He brought it down with a thump that made the glasses tinkle. The box was unsteadily lifted and three sixes and a pair of aces. Beat him if you can, urged Lee in delight. Walt Meyer looked with dazed eyes at that full hand and then glanced at his gold. He paused. He looked over the dice again to see that the spots were all there and that it was not an alcoholized dream. He was in no hurry to risk his seventy dollars upon the touch. Lee fidgeted, but Walt Meyer hung back, smiled, counted the spots again, and at last said, Not quite ready to shake. Let's have another drink. Give us two straights. No, you don't, roared Lee, getting angry. You have to shake those dice. I'll shake them by and by. I ain't in no hurry. What's the use hurrying this for anyway? Here's to my luck and your loss. We quit glasses for sociability's sake, waited while Waltmeyer slowly divided his with splendid impartiality between mouth and shirt bosom, and grew more and more impatient. Look here, he shouted in wrath as Waltmeyer reached out an avaricious but weary hand for the pile of gold. You needn't try any dodging. You've got to shake those dice. Shake nothing, retorted Waltmeyer contemptuously. I'll do just as I please. The Belmont man stood off and eyed the proprietor of the Hotel Mateo in scorn and defiance. We glared back. The longer the two men faced each other, the more infuriated they became. Each muttered fiercely and occasionally spat out remarks uncomplimentary and profane. Suddenly, Waltmeyer grabbed for the gold. He took Lee by surprise. He not only recouped his own $70, but in the scrimmage got away with $5 belonging to Lee. Lee entered a vigorous protest and advanced to get that money into play again. Waltmeyer pulled a six-shooter, but before he could unlimber his artillery, Lee had disarmed him and was master of the field. Now, you wretch, shake those dice or I'll shoot you, roared the infuriated capitalist. Waltmeyer shrieked back a defiance coupled with an uncomplimentary epithet and made no move toward obeying Lee's command. Shake, I say, or I'll shoot, again shouted Lee beside himself with rage. Waltmeyer contemptuously refused and glared at his foe with Dutch courage enough for an army. Bang! Lee raised the revolver and fired point blank at Waltmeyer's head. The two men were but a few feet apart. The bullet struck the rim of Waltmeyer's hat, just missed his head, and passed out through the hat's crown, leaving a hole big enough to permit the passage of a political speech. Waltmeyer's face and eyes were powder burned, but otherwise he was uninjured. 
Seeing that a shot had not taken effect, we raised the pistol to shoot again. But at this juncture, two gentlemen happened to enter the clubhouse. They instantly grasped the situation, and one of them rushed forward and caught Lee's arm, just in time to prevent a second shot. The two dice shakers were separated and escorted to their homes. Lee cannot be induced to part with Walt Meyer's revolver, but flourished it wildly as he is being led away. He has the weapon yet. Walt Meyer still retains the $5 belonging to Lee, and it's understood the men intend to settle on the principle of fair exchange is no robbery and will not prosecute each other. This story came from the great state of New York, being reported in the New York Sun of September 16, 1894. Thank you for joining us today. If you want to continue to uncover all of America's lost and forgotten history, then remember before you leave to hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and remember to like and comment below. And we will see you next time on Americana Archives.